I have a dirty little secret and it's taking place in my TPR closet. Hi friends, I'm Kayla. I don't totally know what this video is, but thanks for being along for the ride with me, even though you don't know what this video is either. I don't know what to call this because I talked recently about doing a summer reset because I saw other people doing these like aesthetically beautiful videos called summer resets or they do like Sunday resets where they just organize their lives feel a sense of peace so they can restart their week or their month or their year on a positive note. I don't think mine's gonna be particularly beautiful to watch or anything uh, or interesting, but we are here because if you are up to date with all of my content, there's just housekeeping things that I want to do. And I don't just mean like cleaning, though clearly I need to clean. I am gonna be cleaning off my TBR shelf, but I'm also gonna be doing something with it that's video related. And I also need to clean up just like all of my organization stuff for videos. Things are kind of chaotic around me and I need to get back on track. Actually, this video also is supposed to act as like a goal check-in because I said I want to do some things at the beginning of the year and we should check in if I did them. Also, sometimes I get different questions about running my YouTube channel and I'm going to answer some of those along the way. <laughs> We're just going to be hanging out. The first thing I need to figure out is my TBR shelf. I just decided to turn on the camera and look, let you see it in its current state. Cause normally when I start filming, I like clean things off. I try to make things generally look presentable. Um, but today, like this is just what happens. I walk in my room and I just start putting things on the shelf that don't belong on the shelf. So for some reason I have two pairs of glasses, my glasses case, my little like skincare tweezer nail set. I just got these really cute um, library card magnet bookmarks and then found out that it was like stolen art from another Etsy seller. Then I have other bookmarks. Maybe I should organize my bookmark jar as well. Also, I just bought these and I think these will help me. Um, this is just a replacement for my weekly calendar that I use every single day and I'm running out of pages. And then this I just bought. I have never purchased a calendar that covered more than one year, like an 18 month calendar that you start at the, in the middle of a year. I've never done it. But the thing with my video content planning is by the midpoint in the year, I know all of the videos I'm gonna do for the second half of the year. And then once I keep getting new ideas, I can't slot them in and I have to plan them for the next year but now I have no calendar and no place to write down and fully think through those thoughts besides like my bullet journal. So I've just been writing all my ideas down and I need a place to put them. So I'm gonna start scheduling 2024 content in here. And I think that'll bring me a sense of peace. So I guess we'll also do a little bit of that in this video. Here's my issue with my TBR shelf. If you watched this video that I reference all the time where I read the first chapter of every book on my TBR shelf, in it I organized my TBR shelf after and the top shelf was priority TBR is what I called it and it's all the books that I gave the first chapter between an 8 and a 10 out of 10 for initial intrigue that I wanted to read right away. And then the bottom shelf was anything below that. So that was five, six months ago and I haven't like kept up with it. So now I have been buying more books and then just throwing them on the shelf, not having read the first chapter and they don't fit on either of the shelves. So I've just been like throwing them on here. And now my priority TBR is like completely disheveled. So I think what we do need to do first is organize the whole TBR shelf and put it back together. But the way I have to do that is read the first chapter of every book that I bought since that video. So if you are a channel member, you can go over to this video right here and it's gonna look exactly like the original one I did. It shouldn't be as long and thorough as that one, but I don't just wanna recreate that video and have it stand alone on my channel. So it is there. And then for all of you who are here, the quick aesthetics of it all, let's do the initial organization together and then I'll pop back in uh, once I'm done organizing it. And I will let you know the ranking that I gave all of the books. Before I do that though, I think this might hurt some people's feelings. Um, it's hurting mine, but I'm not going to include romance. In fact, romance is leaving my TBR shelf. Me and romance are not getting along this year. I don't want to continue putting it in secret TBRs and slotting it into videos. I don't want that stack sitting here looking at me every single day. And I also do not want to read the first chapter of any of them and get a gauge because I think romance for me is the worst experience to do that with. Because the first chapter of a romance book means absolutely nothing for how I'm actually going to enjoy it by the end. And I don't want to read the first chapter until I'm actually reading the book. So that was step one. Now step two is pulling off all the books that I've bought this year and putting it back to the place that it was in that video. And we can see like what I've accomplished. This one, this one. 
they're piling up. Let me dust this and I'll be right back. So here's a reminder of how we left it back in February. There were a hundred books on my TBR shelf, not including the anthology stack in the corner. Um, on the top shelf, there were 56 books, which is what I called priority TBR. And now there are 33. That's it. Look how blank the top shelf looks like compared. I put them all back where they're supposed to be in their different categories. And there's so much blank space, which is great because I need it. Uh, Cause now all the books that I removed, I need to read the first chapter of and put them where they are supposed to go. I think this is such a great way to assess my goals because it's so visual. I have read over 20 things from the priority TBR and the books that I love the first chapter of, which is so great. The bottom shelf hasn't changed that much, which makes sense because why would I be reading books that I didn't love the first chapter of unless I was allotting them into certain video projects. So I read like 100 Years of Solitude, which was technically on the bottom shelf. And I will be reading The Family Game soon for my book club, even though the first chapter wasn't my favorite, I think I could really like this book. So we're giving things a chance. I think the only stack that really hasn't changed is this one up here, which is thrillers that I gave initial intrigue an eight, nine or 10 out of 10, and I still haven't picked them up. And that says something about me that I really can't deal with right now. Because if we are assessing the goals in my goal video that I made at the beginning of the year, it wasn't specifically about goals, there was a TBR involved, there was a lot going on but I listed like four goals and that's it in the entire thing and one of them was to read more thrillers and not just read more thrillers but read the ones that I'm excited about and the ones that are brand new purchases because I hate when they just sit here for years and years accumulating dust and look here we are seven months into the year and I, I have not accomplished that goal so we can um, x that off and now I've got 15 to 20 more books that need to find their proper spot on the shelves. So I'll probably be back tomorrow with the final results of this. And in the meantime, if you are a channel member, you can click over to the video where I talk about each first chapter thoroughly like I did the first time. Hello, welcome back. Just kidding, I'm the one who left, not you. I have now read the first chapter of 20 things and some things were surprising, some things weren't. Some first chapters were just like the synopsis rewritten as plot. Some of them introduced me to concepts I didn't even know were in the book and just completely intrigued me. So I ranked all of the first chapters from one to 10 as far as initial intrigue. It's not saying anything about the book itself, just how much I'm interested now after reading that first chapter. Was it great? Was it mediocre? Uh, with my lowest rating, I gave a four to The Kind Worth Saving by Peter Swanson and a five to both Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell and Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. My most common rating was a six out of 10. So my stack of those includes Stay Awake by Megan Golden, Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina, The Good Wife of Bath by Karen Brooks, then Co by Sherry Dimaline, and Burnham Wood by Eleanor Keton. With a seven out of 10, I have a bunch of weird books and then one thriller. So The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. We also have Earth Eater by Dolores Reyes. The Two Doctors Gorski by Isaac Fellman. The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older. And Camp Zero by Michelle Min Sterling. So these 13 books all need to fit somewhere on the bottom half of my shelves. I'm gonna put things with mystery kind of plots right over here. Slide one in here and then the rest I'll pop over here. And then these seven get to live on the top shelf and are now considered priority TBR. Getting an eight out of 10, The Insatiable Volt Sisters by Rachel Eve Moulton. Now You See Us by Bali Kaur Jaswal. And The Final Strife by Sarah L. Arifi. The two that got a nine out of 10 include 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, and Chain Gang All Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenda, which I kind of was. And finally, my two 10 out of 10s, only two got 10 out of 10. And that's Mirrorland by Carol John. Stone and The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. So we've only got the one mystery plus I guess zero days that we need to add to this horrifically large mystery stack. It's intimidating. Just one general fiction to go over here and a bunch of speculative things to add to this lineup. And we now have 41 books back on the TBR of things that I am most excited to read, want to read immediately, will fit into any videos that I can, and hopefully I can commit to only adding things to the shelf as the year continues once I've read the first chapter. <laughs> now we can move on to the next activity. Since that was one of the bigger, more daunting tasks, I'm gonna do something quick and easy next, and it's just organize my bookmark jar. This is my Literally Dead Book Club mug. I love it so much. And I've seen people over the years doing like, bookmark tours or like sharing their bookmark collection and I have never really felt 
there was a battery in my cup. <laughs> Side note, anything else weird in here? I don't know, I've never really felt connected to the bookmarks that I collect. Yeah, I buy them and I think they're pretty, and then I kind of just put them in the star and I forget about them. I don't use bookmarks as often as I probably should, but I've been using them a lot more recently and I just thought we could quickly run through the ones that I don't need anymore and I've bought some really pretty ones recently. So let's decide what we need and don't need. Um, this is my least favorite color and I feel like I honestly hold on to this one because I use it for photos. And like is that a good enough reason to have it so it can sit in a jar like when I want to take one of these pictures? I don't know. I do have two of them so I think I'm going to keep the navy blue. I have these ones that I got. I think actually a lot of these are connected to videos. So that's why I want to keep them because it's almost like a memory jar. These came in a book box subscription. I think I'll keep these two. I don't know why I even have this one. Like it's kind of boring. Then obviously this one that I made myself in this video, it has to stay. I shared this one with you that I found in my memory box that I made in like fourth grade. Obvious keep. I feel like with book depository closing, like this has to stay just because it's a memory. It's like they have really cool bookmarks or had uh, that you can color. I never colored them, but I guess I'll just keep one. I have five. Then likewise, Page Habit is a book box subscription that is no longer around. So I think I'm ready to recycle these ones. I've always felt like such a sham with these. We all know I'm not a classics girl. Like have I ever read Great Expectations? I don't know. Pride and Prejudice? I have. I didn't really like it. Maybe I'll just keep this one. And then I have a bunch from Mosaic Books. And I don't know, like when you guys go to an indie bookstore and they give you a bookmark, it's obviously so nice. But like I go every single week and should I say no to a bookmark? I would feel too bad saying no, but I've just collected way too many of them. Then there's this one, which is so pretty. I got at a farmer's market and we were on vacation when resin art was becoming such a thing. So I have to keep that one. These ones I like because they're thick. They're the Indigo brand, but I don't actually love either of these designs. So maybe I should... I could probably donate these. I should really have my own free little library because then I could have a mug in the free little library and people could take bookmarks out. Oh, and then I have the leather one that YouTube printed for me. They like gifted it one year. It was so random and so kind. So now she's looking a little bit empty, but I recently bought this gold one and this gold one that says pause. I also have these gold ones from, I think it was Etsy. It says one more chapter. I got the library card ones and then these ones that look like stamps. And then I found these ones on Etsy. So this one is brand new. It looks like you're looking through a window and it's so pretty. And then this one is like a reading tracker. So instead of a reading journal, you keep it all on here and you just mark how many books you've read and then you share the stats of your reading down here. I don't know if I'm actually gonna use it because I don't want it to be ugly. No, I will, I will use it. So that's now my updated bookmark jar. Check it off on the goals list. And then speaking of checking things off, I had some TBR goals this year. So I made like a 23 in 23 uh, graphic. And then I also had uh, 12 books recommended by 12 friends, which I was using the members TBR jar for. So to see if I'm on track for the 23 and 23, I think I have read all but three things. We have a thriller, which like gets into my goal of reading thrillers when they come out, which I didn't do. I have Salt Slow by Julia Armfield, which I was thinking about reading by the ocean and then I just forgot to bring it with me on the trip. And then I have Grey Warren, which obviously I want to read and like there's a couple videos I could fit it into this year if I want to complete it. I should, I should complete it because it's on the list. And then for the 12 books by 12 friends. So this isn't filled out totally because there's one every single month that I pull out of the TBR jar. And I have completed six so far because we're halfway through the year. I'm currently reading um, Do You Dream of Terra 2? So I'll let you know how that goes by the end of the month in my wrap up. But at this point, I have read six things. Three of them have gone well. Indian Horse, several people are typing Gideon the Ninth, and three of them have not gone well. Um, Redder Days, the worst best man and funny feelings. And the plan is, as I said before, if half of the reads go well by the end of the year, I'll continue it for another year. So right now we're on track, but anything could happen. Another goal of mine besides reading thrillers when they come out was to DNF. And I can happily or sadly say that I've definitely accomplished that. I have DNF'd more books this year than any other year. I don't know if I should do like a mid-year update with that. I guess we're past the mid-year now, so maybe I'll just do it at the end of the year. Tell you everything that I DNF'd, but I also feel pressure with those videos to like give you a good reason why I DNF'd. And there isn't always one. It's just like the first chapter didn't work for me and maybe I'll come back to it, maybe I won't. The books that I will never give up on though are the ones 
on the poster because I've been scratching things off very slowly. I do not do this with intention, but I have something to scratch off. So I thought we could do that now. This might not actually be the satisfying clip that I want it to be because the one I have to scratch off, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is up here. And because this kind of sits off the wall, it's hard to get it flat. I'll have to come back to you to do the little prince and the princess bride later this year. Oh, just kidding. We have another one to scratch off. 100 Years of Solitude. And that leaves us at a little bit of an unsatisfying number, 39 out of the 100 books. I'm sure my sound quality is now all over the place because I just filmed that with my DSLR. And so I thought I would answer a question really quick here um, because some people have asked what vlogging camera I use. And then the people who know what I currently use, they're asking me if I like it. So for the first like three years of my channel, I used my DSLR to film. I pretty much only ever filmed in the house. I wasn't vlogging. I wasn't taking the camera out and about. So this worked perfectly fine. Then for three to four years, I switched to uh, the Canon G7X, which was one of the first like vlogging cameras with the flip out screen that was more of a handheld point and shoot vibe. And I really liked this even though there were flaws. I think the only real flaw was the sound because you could always hear like the lens focusing. And now at this point, I'm using the Sony ZV-1, which was specifically made to be a vlogging camera. So it has a flip out screen on the side. It has like the internal microphone that this one also has. But there's a bunch of other like key features that makes it much more for filming than photos. This to me felt like a mix of a photo camera and a video camera. And so that's what I would say for anyone looking into a vlogging camera. I prefer the Sony ZV-1. I think that most people will enjoy it. But if you want to use it for an equal amount of photo stuff, I think that this one is better because you don't have to switch as many dials. The only other thing I would say about the ZV-1 is if you're in it for speed, like you find yourself needing to whip out the camera and film something so quickly, like it's about to end, like something fast is happening. The ZV-1 is far too slow. I miss some things when I'm trying to film. Um, I'll try to, sh how can I show you a comparison? So this is the Canon, this is the Sony. I do prefer the flip up screen, but I've gotten used to the flip out one. But if I push the on button at the same time and then go to hit record, this one just takes a little bit longer to figure out what I, I want it to do. <laughs> so on record. This one's already recording. This one is in standby. Still in standby. Still in standby. <laughs> and now it's recording. I think it will start recording a little bit faster if I don't try to click record immediately. Like if I turn them both on, this one again, I can record right away. This one, if I wait until something loads and then I click record, it's there. Also, there's a red light on this one that I don't love, but I'm sure I could cover up it was, if it was really bugging me. I'm now gonna do some content planning in my new planner that I'm really excited about. This is the one that I'm currently using. Actually, while we're here, I might as well flip to the end because on this page, I have been coloring in all of my four and a half and five star reads of the year. And I'm sure we do have some more to add. So the last time I updated was a mind spread out on the ground in Babbel. So let me just quickly cross reference Instagram. I read those in May, but if we're doing four and a half, I should also include something in the water by Katherine Stedman. And now we have that moment where I have all these black pens and I can't remember which ones actually have ink. Is it this one? Okay, I found one and then I drew on myself. So let's do something in the water. Oh, June we had hunger and also it came from the closet and Una out of order. So we'll do this one here. Cute. I think I started out using pencil crayons and then some of them aren't and it's like it's whatever at this point. But this book was pink. Una Out of Order was more of this light turquoisey blue. I guess something in the water was also turquoisey though. And then Hunger is white but I'll probably fill it in gray just so it doesn't look unfinished. I 
I feel like maybe I need to start intentionally reading some more colorful books because this isn't the greatest color scheme. I want it more fun and colorful. Now getting into this and flipping to January, I'm gonna write down a couple of my video plans. And a question I get sometimes is like, how far ahead am I planning? How do I stay organized? It really is just physical things. Like I have bullet journals and I have agendas and I write it all down. I'm not really a tech girl. As much as my job is on the computer and I like editing, it's like I have used the same editing program for 15 years. I don't like upgrading my stuff. I don't care about like the newest technology. You're never gonna see me with a smartwatch. I'm probably never gonna use Google Calendar. <laughs> like I just like writing things down physically. And as far as planning content, um, yes, I have things organized for January, but I'll show you how easy it is to fill up the content I have planned. So what I might do on this page is write down all of the books that I'm thinking about reading in January. I obviously don't know what all of those are gonna be, but I do know a few because I'm starting a video series, it's probably gonna be monthly next year, where I read, I, I'm trying to find a five star from every single year I've been alive. So starting in 1990, I already know one of those books is Jurassic Park. So I already know I'm gonna be reading Jurassic Park in January. And then another book that I know is getting released in January, if like we had a list of things I'm reading in new releases, in the new release category would be the upcoming Sean and McGuire book in the We Were Children series that I can't remember the title of, Mislaid in Parts Half Known. So now if I go over to video planning and vlogging, I normally have three vlogs, reading vlogs in a month. So I know I'm gonna be doing like booktuber favorites just because I do that every January. And now I'm planning this new series that's gonna span the entire year. So it's like, 1990 reads and now looking at these two covers i'm like there's dinosaurs on two books that i'm planning on reading in january obviously i need to do a dinosaur vlog now because like how silly would that be for content and i was actually um talking to my channel members about that when i realized there were multiple dinosaur things coming out and i got a recommendation <laughs> not a recommendation but a, a mention of a book that i think is like a smutty dinosaur romance so obviously I'm doing a dinosaur vlog and it's that easy. I suddenly have my entire January reading like planned and the videos planned. And so now the next time I have an idea, I'm just gonna have to flip to February and write it down there. I already know that the next year we're gonna be focused on is 1993. So I already have a video planned for that. I don't know the books yet though, but I can also write all the new releases here. Another question I got is how do I decide what I'm gonna buy from the library versus buying brand new versus thrifting for? I don't think I have a hard and fast rule about it. It mostly comes down to timing. So when I wanna read it by, if I have it slotted in for a certain video, I probably can't wait the maybe 12 weeks it would take to get it from the library. So I'm gonna buy it brand new. I do do a lot of pre-ordering, but I also do pre-order canceling. I buy a lot of things from my local indie bookstore if I want it in the moment moment because I would feel bad about canceling any pre-orders. So pre-orders I mostly do through Indigo because Indigo you can cancel a pre-order at any point. And especially if a book hasn't been shipped by its release date, I'm going to cancel that pre-order because I know it's going to be in stock in the store like the day of release. And Indigo doesn't charge you on pre-orders until it ships. So if I'm planning something for my book club and I know I want to read a new release, I'll probably pre-order it to make sure I'm going to have it in my hands. But I have no problem reading like book club picks as library books. So if it's in stock at the library, I will get it from there for sure. But because of all of that, I also need to be super organized. So this is when I have to plan things really far ahead. So for example, every single November, I do the Goodreads Choice Awards. I pick a category and I read all of the books in it. So I would have to start preparing for that now. So I'm actually going to do that today. I'm going to place some pre-orders. I'm going to plan some things. So as far as the Goodreads Choice Awards, let's say I was doing horror again. Unless I want to purchase 20 brand new books in the month of November, I need to think ahead. So I would go to the Goodreads and I would look at all the ones from last year and I would go check out all of those authors. I would see if they have a new release coming out or that has already come out this year. And I would also do things like Google best horror books of 2023. This is a pretty brand new article. So I would look through here and I would see, okay, these are all books that I've read already or I have on my TBR, but here's ones that I haven't. So Lone Woman by Victor Laval. Now I'm gonna go to my library. I'm gonna search it and I see that there's 16 holds on just three copies. So I need to place my hold right now if I wanna read it come November. If I waited until like October or November to reserve Vampires of El Norte, I might not get it on time. I actually already have that one reserved. And then if it doesn't happen to come in time for the video, then that's when I will go ahead and buy it in person, which I occasionally have to do. I'm sure there is some type of mathematic thing in my head that says if 
the synopsis is intriguing and the cover is beautiful and it's from an author I have enjoyed before, I'm probably gonna pre-order it. But then there's also plenty that I take a risk on and sometimes it bites me in the butt and it's a bad book and I spent $40 on it. So something I realized I haven't pre-ordered quite yet is Mammoth at the Gates, which comes out pretty soon. I'm gonna pre-order that one. I recently heard about this one called Never Whistle at Night, which is, I mean, a little bit on sale. And I'm always a sucker for pre-ordering anthologies. Like I will always buy one of those instead of getting it from the library because I don't know how, so I'm gonna read it. I probably won't get to it for months, but like, this is so pretty. Also, I was just telling you about Alicia Elliott and I gave a book of hers recently, Five Stars, that was a nonfiction. She has a fiction book coming out again in September. I guess like two months ahead is when I do a lot of my pre-ordering it seems. So, and then she fell is one that I'm keeping my eye on and I could look at the library and I don't see it here. That doesn't mean it's never gonna be here, but since it's currently on sale, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-order that one. Another September release that I really want is The Death I Gave Him which is a little bit expensive, but I don't think, this doesn't seem like a well-known one, so the library hasn't even heard of it. So I will pre-order this one now, just because I don't wanna forget. And if it goes on sale, I can always cancel this order and make a new one, or if it becomes available at the library, I can do that too. And now my September pre-orders are done. Those are just the ones off the top of my head, and then I'll probably go to Goodreads and just make sure that I'm not missing anything. Another question I've been asked is how I find out about new releases. A lot of it is Goodreads, but mostly it's just social media in general. I follow a lot of authors on Instagram, used to on Twitter. And even if I'm not following them on Instagram, I watch a lot of stories and people are constantly sharing things as stories. Finding out about more releases, there is this new release section under browse at the top of Goodreads. And it, if you have an author on your shelves, it will show you any book that that person is coming out with. So you can click next month, next month. It's usually like five months that they have available. So I will just browse through this like once a month to see what's going on. And I'm mostly thoroughly looking through this stuff when I am doing a video that's like upcoming books you need to know about, which I am planning soon. So I will keep my eye on all of this and then look through all the screenshots on my phone because I'm just constantly keeping track of every book I've ever heard of. Now the last place that I'm gonna take you and the last goal I need to tick off because I've been putting it off takes place here, not for the reason that you might think, um, but it's because I have a dirty little secret and it's taking place in my TBR closet. It's not the aggressive amount of clothes that I have. It's not the aggressive amount of TBR books that I need to read. It's down here where I have been shoving every single book that I've read this year. Why you ask when you have a red shelf? The fact of the matter is it's gotten pretty full. Obviously it's gotten pretty full. Now I've been in denial about this and I've been putting this off because there is still space on my shelves. I know for a fact that I have shelves that are empty. Not that one. <laughs> okay, here, I have shelves that are empty behind the books. And then I have shelves that are stocked behind the books. And literally every day of my life, I get a comment that asks me why I keep books that I don't like. And my explanation is just that I like collecting books. I like having a visual representation of every book that I've read. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't owe anybody like books leaving my life. However, since the beginning of this year, I have felt like, overwhelmed at the idea of having to take 10 to 20 books that I read in that month and find a spot for it on the shelves. Because at this point, there's like a rotation going on. The books that are forward facing, they start to get put to the back. And then the books that I just read come to the front. And just the constant reorganization and finding a slot for it used to be a fun experience. And now I find it daunting because I'm forced to look at the books that I gave one and two stars and I have to think, why, why do I still own it? Because it used to be I wanted full stocked beautiful shelves, but now I have them. And at this point, I feel like I could get rid of all my one and two stars and maybe even a good chunk of threes. And I would still have full shelves because I'm bringing in new favorites all the time. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna unhaul. Again, there is gonna be an extended members video where I go through every single book that I'm getting rid of. I'm not gonna drag that out here. This is for more of the satisfying experience of uh, the shelves being changed. I think the first step is to bring out all the books that I have read and that are contenders for the shelf. Goodness, that's a lot of books. So this was actually done with a little bit of intention. Obviously, I regularly make content around my books and I found that 
every time I wanted to do a video that was like the mid-year survey, quarterly wrap-ups, having to look through these shelves and pull every single one of them out was taking me a lot of time. So now that I'm done two quarterly updates and the mid-year thing, I was gonna do this at the end of the year, but I think I'm gonna do it now and then again at the end of the year. And my thinking was, if I do it this way and wait until I have a bulk of things, it'll be easier for me to get rid of books here that I didn't love and don't really belong here. Because in this case, it'll feel like a better book is now taking its spot. My only singular issue right now is with all of these books, there's also one and two stars. And because again, I make content around the things that I read, I don't want to get rid of any of these until the end of the year, because I do like to have like every book that I've read represented in a photo and in a video at the end of the year. And I don't think holding on to those bad ratings for like six months is that big of a deal. I also definitely am not about to get rid of every single book that I didn't like from these shelves. I'm not getting rid of anything that's ever been a book club selection of mine, even if I didn't like it. I'm also not getting rid of the book if it's part of an author's entire collection. Like I didn't like The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, but I own six Grady Hendrix books. And if I do ever decide to reorganize my shelves by author, I will enjoy having all of their stuff collected together, but I need to make space for like a hundred books right now. So let's do it. I'm going to start over at the speculative shelf. We did it. What a journey. Okay, I just fixed up a couple things and here's the final look. It's so funny how, well, it just looks like nothing has changed if you didn't follow along with me moving stuff or you didn't know my shelves really well. It's the exact same aesthetic still, but like a hundred books have been swapped out. So here's the final look. As always on the left, we have anthologies and nonfiction, general fiction, romance, whatever, thrillers and mysteries and speculative. So horror, fantasy, magical realism, sci-fi, whatever else on the far right. And just like that, more than ever before, my shelf full of books that I've read actually represents not just my reading, but the books that I love. I absolutely felt that sense of accomplishment and organization that I wanted. And now there is this like sense of mental peace because I don't have those books like staring at me from the closet. I also organized some video plans and I caught back up with a lot of my just like running around thoughts that I needed to hone in in certain places. Thanks so much for hanging out with me on this organizational weekend. Uh, if you want to see all the books that I unhauled, I will, or I'm going to unhaul, I'll flash over to them now, but there is an entire video where I talk about every title. These are all the books that I'm getting rid of. I think it's like 150 are now leaving the collection. 